Work with electricity. Boss tells us we need to find and follow one specific cable. Sure thing, boss. Head to the substation. Find the cable. It heads straight down. Head to the basement. It keeps going down. Head to the sub-basement. It still keeps going down. Head to the sub-sub-basement. It keeps going down. Head to the sub-sub-sub basement tunnels. Thousands upon thousands of cables. Still managed to find it. Alright, I guess we follow it. Walk in the damp pitch black with one flashlight between three people. Thank God for phone flashlights. Walk for about an hour. Twist upon turn upon twist. Fairly sure we are following the same cable, but the sheer amount of cables makes it hard. No one is quite sure where the fuck we are. No one is quite sure how to get back. We are literally one to three stories underground in a massive labyrinth. Side tunnels turn into main tunnels that turn into side tunnels. Sometimes we climb stairs, sometimes we walk down gentle slopes. Looking off to the sides, we can see dead ends, larger tunnels, small passages you could barely crawl through. Every now and then, we see stairs heading straight up, can only assume they go to the surface. We have taken more turns than I can count. Come to door number 178,789.8. A set of stairs head down about 10 meters, straight into knee-deep water. Well, okay, fuck this shit. We stand on the stairs, talking about how we should just abandon this fruitless endeavor. We wonder if any of us can find their way back. Maybe we should follow the cable back. Hear a splash in the water. Everyone is dead silent. Every flashlight turned towards the tunnel. Can only see about 10 to 20 meters in front of us. Seconds that feel like hours pass. One of us starts laughing. This triggered whatever was in the tunnel. Something not human screams, and we can hear a furious splashing as something runs away. All of us are frozen in fear. I say, let's get the fuck out of here, breaking the paralysis. Head back in a half jog, hopelessly lost. First set of stairs we find, we run up. Come up to another level. Cross intersection tunnels all around. Look around and can just make out a second set of stairs. Run to them. End up in less creepy looking tunnels. More like an old ass basement, really. Walk around aimlessly. Not quite as scared anymore. Lots of junk all over the place. Industrial junk, to be specific. Find another set of stairs heading up. End up in a basement that looks quite used. Lights are actually on. Head up the stairs, adjacent the ones we came up. Find ourselves in the middle of some steel industry during working hours. Get curious looks from the workers, and then the foreman comes out and says, What the fuck? You can't be here. Where did you come from? The tunnels is all we managed to say. What tunnels? Uh, never mind. Can you show us out? Get escorted out. Foreman looks at us like we are crazy. Find ourselves two kilometers away from where we started. All of us are dusty and muddy, and look quite disheveled. Tell the boss it's an impossible task. Never really speak of it again. I can add that some doors were locked, but we have a master key that opens up pretty much the entire city. Specifically, the doors leading up to the industry were locked. I'm fairly sure the people working there have no idea there's miles of tunnels underneath their feet. I can also add that I have had a hard time figuring out what kind of animal could have found its way into those tunnels, let alone live there. It was big, like at least as big as a deer. No way a rat can splash around that much. I don't know of any animal besides rats that could live in a place like that. Here is one from about a couple of years ago. Out in the desert, riding quads with a buddy. Trying to track down old mines for cool rocks, Maybe an artifact or two. Locate one that's shown on the USGS topographic map we have. Entrances are covered with gates, like pick related. Smell like nasty sewage coming out of the main entrance. 
mine has been taken over by bats. Break off some neat marble from a nearby outcropping and move on. Look for another mine I heard about from a guy at a local rock show. Supposedly a good place to find nice malachite samples and the occasional piece of native copper. Supposedly, a few miles away from the previous one, tucked away behind some rough terrain that keeps most off-roaders and casual explorers away. It's off my map, so I need to try to remember the landmarks he gave me. Sure enough, there is what was at one point an old access road for a mine where the guy said it was. The road has been basically destroyed over the years, with several parts of it collapsing into deep ravines and washes. I've been riding since I was a small child, so I am very experienced with rough terrain. But he has been riding off-road for several years as well. Still get to a point where we have to hop off the quads and continue on foot. Have to scramble through some rough terrain for about an hour, but eventually find the mine. But he doesn't like going underground, wants to sift through the tailings instead. I'll stay out here in case you get trapped enough. No true dwarf. JPEG. Enter the mine with walkie talkies for communication. It's a pretty good sized mine. Everything looks pretty solid, and there aren't any unusual smells. Get about 50 feet in, pass a few minor side passages, find some old minecart tracks, follow them further in. Tunnel splits, follow the tracks, and find some old rusty piping. Also find a few old boxes labeled Apache Powder Company. Boxes look mostly full of dust, but there are a few sticks of dynamite inside. Don't want to risk accidentally setting off unstable old dynamite, so I head back to the fork and take the other tunnel. Find a kick-ass malachite deposit. Work at it with my pick, and eventually get a sweet chunk of fibrous malachite out. Put it in my backpack and follow the tunnel back until it stops. There is a small room in the back, nothing much to see. Suddenly catch a giant whiff of something decomposing. Look around. Don't see anything obvious. There's a small, exploratory tunnel in the back that looks to have partially collapsed. Shine my light to check it out. Dead rabbit torn to pieces inside. Still in the process of decomposition. Decide that this mine has been fun, but I'm now done with it. Radio buddy and say I'm done and coming out. Hear him yelling something down near the entrance. Ask him what he's yelling about over the radio. He replies that we don't need to use the radios if I'm just dicking around near the entrance. I tell him I'm probably a good hundred feet back in the end of a mine tunnel. There is a pause, and he comes back talking much quieter. Anon, there's something moving around near the entrance. Tactically ship wrecks. Ask him if it's a coyote or anything. It's barely out of the range of his light, and he won't go past the entrance, but he is certain it's not a coyote. Well, fuck. I'm trapped. He says he'll try and hit it with a rock to scare it into a side passage. Get my rock pick ready. Really wish I'd bothered to bring my gun. He gives me a 3-2-1 countdown, and there is a pause. Suddenly, loud-ass scream. Sort of like you'd hear from a mountain lion, but deeper and more ragged. Fuck. Buddy yells that it ran into a side passage. I'm already running. Book it as fast as I can, without tripping. Entrance is in sight. Buddy is visibly freaking out. Glance into a side passage as I run past. Catch a glimpse of eye shine and something pale and hairless. Sprinting intensifies. Meet up with Buddy. We both take off. Can hear something thrashing around in the mine. No longer care what it is. Cover the previously hour-long hike in maybe 15 minutes. Jump on quads. Ride way faster than was safe. Make it back. Decide that for a while, we probably don't need to visit that one again. Still got my malachite though. Pick related. We did end up checking it out again, armed, a few months back. Someone had collapsed the entrance, and there were a bunch of warning signs posted in the area. It's possible that there's still a vertical shaft somewhere that's uncovered, but to my knowledge, nobody is getting into that mine again. Previous pick is my trusty quad and the bat-infested mine as of a few weeks ago. 
Up the hill behind it is the gate from the first post and the marble outcropping, which you can kind of see to the left. OP of Pick Related. This is a story my grandpa likes to tell. Apparently this kind of shit runs in the family. Late 70s. Doing some rock hounding in the mountains northeast of Phoenix. Just him and a buddy hiking into some really rough terrain. Plan to spend three days out. Reach the furthest point of the trip. Set up camp and start climbing around in the mountains looking for good sites to work. What was a partly cloudy sky is gradually becoming cloudier and darker. Blow out soon, fellow stalker. Dot waff. Buddy isn't feeling well. Goes back to camp to make sure everything is tied down. Grandpa is stubborn as fuck. Won't let any pussy rainstorm keep him from bitch slapping rocks to gain their parts. Gets up a good ways on a hill. Wind starts picking up. Rain starts. Grandpa don't give a fuck. Smacks some feldspar out of a cliff for a bit. Thunder rolls through the canyon they're in. Grandpa now gives a fuck. Looks for cover. Finds a cliffside cave. Very common in the area. Rain gets heavier. Grandpa ducks into the cave. Cave is just barely tall enough to sit in. Is dark as fuck thanks to the storm. And has more than its fair share of mouse turds scattered about. Grandpa digs a flashlight out of his backpack. And starts checking out the cave. Notices some clay pots and a bundle of cloth way in the back. Desire to know more intensifies. Cave narrows as it gets further back. Grandpa has to crawl on his hands and knees. Clay pots look very old, though they are well preserved. Grandpa assumes this was an old Native American storage cache. Wants to document what's in the cache for science and history. Can't quite reach the bundle. Tries to pull it closer. Bundle shifts. Something rolls over in it. Grandpa pulls a bit of cloth away. Suddenly, is locking eyes with a goddamn human skull with its mouth wide open. Readings say nope levels at maximum. Grandpa backpedals the fuck out of the cave. Starts hauling ass down the mountain for the wind and rain. There's a huge crack of thunder, and Grandpa swears it sounds like laughter as it echoes down the canyon. Gets back to camp, bravely ducks into the tent. Grandpa is spooked as fuck. Tells Buddy, who is then also spooked as fuck. Too late to hike out. Have to stay the night. Storm continues most of the night. Grandpa keeps thinking he hears strange noises outside the tent. Keeps his 1911 close the whole night. Doesn't sleep at all. They hike back the next day. Feel like they're being watched the whole way back. Yells sorry as he gets into the car. Feels better. Goes home and bangs my grandma. Was that necessary? Fun fact. Some Native American cultures in the southwest United States take their deceased and the deceased possessions as far from their village as possible in order to keep the person's angry ghost from fucking up the village. Depending on the culture, the bodies and possessions can be burned, buried, or placed in caves as long as they are far away from their former home. Some cultures even went as far as to burn the deceased's dwelling to eliminate any connection between the dead and the living. Be me. Growing up in the middle of nowhere in the sticks of Michigan. Obviously not much to do, but be outside. Family and friends loved to hunt, and we owned a lot of land. At least twice a year, we'd go up to our cottage up north a bit. Only neighbors were retired people, and maybe some yuppers that also owned cottages. Be really late at night, with my best friends just walking around. Got done playing at the little park they had. Decided to take the long way back and go past this fence we had. See an old building, and so many old cars and such. Decide lol okay, let's go explore. We don't have flashlights, no cell phones or anything, but our CD players. Get inside. Can't really see anything, but we spot a fridge. Open it up, and there's jarred fruits and shit. Grab them, and start throwing them at cars. Bad idea, because it smelled so bad, and it was all over our hands. Decide to go inside more, and see if we can get to the highest level. Crashing around, we finally get to the top. Start hearing really weird sounds, and stuff moving around us. 
we're a wee bit scared, considering we have nothing with us, and we are kind of blind in the darkness. Suddenly, a bear starts making its way towards the broken glass and fruit we threw earlier, which also happened to be by the entrance. Eventually it leaves. We figure we better head back. Get lost trying to navigate through the house and shit. Ended up in maybe a really big room, or something. No freaking idea, because inside, it's pitch black. You know when it's really dark, and you lose your sense of sight, but your hearing ability increases. Anyway, we're using our hands to guide ourselves against the walls, when my buddy kinda shudders. Ask him what's up. He's like, bro, feel this. I make my way closer to him, stumbling about, and trip over a bucket, filled with something god-awful. I get up. He grabs my hand and puts it on what he wants me to feel. Literally felt like flesh or something. I freak out, and a million things run through my head almost. Mostly wondering why he fucking made me touch it. Also wishing we never came here. We keep moving, and then we start hearing something creepy around, so we stop. Sort of see an entrance, or something of the sort, because the light is shining through it. We stop hearing noises, so we carefully walk over to the light. Both of us stop dead in our tracks after the sound we hear. It was a bobcat, making that awful call it does that sends goosebumps and cold sweat through your whole body. Of course, can't see this motherfucker, but it has to be close. Must be what we heard walking around, maybe, who knows. After maybe 20 minutes, we start walking out and try our best to get back around to the path that goes back to the cottage. We look around, and try to remember where this place was, so we can check it out in daylight, and bring flashlights. As we look around, we see a shape in the dark, moving by the cars, insta-scary mode. We both look at each other, and book it back down the path. I don't know how long exactly it took, but we finally got back to the cottage, just when my parents were pulling in. They asked why we were out so late, that it was very dangerous to go out during the night, because of bears. We're like, yeah, sorry, but don't tell them anything else. Stay up pretty late, talking all about it, but we know we definitely want to go back. Eventually daylight comes. Tell parents yada yada, we're going to the park, see ya. Armed with flashlights and knives, we try our best to get back to that place. Eventually, after maybe 45 minutes, we find it. We look for tracks. See the bear tracks, then where the path was, there was the bobcat tracks. We both think how lucky we were to be alive. Completely forgot about the figure moving by the vehicles the night before. Enter building with the flashlights, and we start looking around a bit. Eventually find that room. Turns out it was sorta in the basement, not sure how we ended up down there. Look down on ground to see there was like a red paint, or blood, who fucking knows. All over the ground where I tripped over. See my shoe marks, but I also see someone else's prints. My friend said it wasn't his, and it would make sense, considering these were going farther into the room. Dawns on us about the thing we felt that was fleshy feeling. We start searching around for anything that could feel like that. Don't see anything, so we are really scared at this point. Decide to follow those other prints, and they sort of lead to another staircase, going deeper down, but it stopped leaving a mark. Decide well let's go down, and it looks like someone was sort of living there. There was food, like some cans, etc., and a makeshift bed, and a pretty cool looking chair that looks like it was made of bone and sticks. Decide maybe we should go, but as we are leaving, we hear some crackling outside. We get really big eyed and stare at each other, then book it upstairs to the roof again. Once up there, my friend grabs me and throws me down. I knew exactly why, but he covered my mouth anyway. We hear footsteps footing down the steps into the basement below. Instead of going back down, we figure it's better to jump off. It wasn't too high, so we did that parkour looking shit, Legend of Zelda style. Once we land, we hightail it to the park. We start playing around on the swing set, thinking how fucking scary that shit was, and wondering what kind of person would want to live there exposed. Then we start wondering about what we felt that was fleshy last night. Still no fucking ideas. Decide to go back to the cottage where we stayed. The rest of the trip, playing Crash Bandicoot, racing, and Tekken. Okay, here's a more recent sort. 
This was just before I joined the military. Not creepy. This is going more of the urban exploring. Being places, maybe you shouldn't be. Parents take me and a buddy to Chicago for a birthday present. Not overly excited, but oh well. We were staying at one of the highest floors of the Trump Hotel, which by the way, was like a freaking maze in itself. Finally get to the bottom floor, start walking the streets and shit. Went to buy some more dip for us. We see like a sweet ass looking building, with a bunch of people outside it taking pictures. Wonder what's so interesting. There is a publicly open building by it, and notice the roofs are sort of connected. Get inside said building, literally not a person inside, or anything for that matter really, except occasional guards walking by the front entrance. Naturally, we snag as many pics as possible here and there. Lots of interesting stuff as it turns out. By that, I mean tons of locked doors, with fancy writing on them and stuff. Still no clue what we were doing or where we were. Have to hide from guards from time to time, which always seemed to just be on the first floor, so it wasn't too hard to avoid. Basically, after snagging some pics and looking around, we eventually left. Right after high school graduation, my friend and I wanted to take a little road trip around the farm of Michigan, just to have a little more bro time before we parted ways and began our lives. Everything from beginning to end was normal as hell. Michigan is such a unique state. Where we were driving, it was nothing but farmland, flat as hell, and windmills, hardly any people. We finally hit the very top of the farm, and we stopped to grab a bite. Literally. This was a cliché of every small town small diner waitress ever. She was a cute girl, 8 out of 10, small town, but big city dreams, I'm sure you can picture it. If you ever listened to country music, you'd really get a feeling for everything they're talking about when on a trip like this. Met a retired vet in the diner that was in the same career field I was going into. Did some small talk, and we departed. I have a special 2006 Mustang that me and my friends built. Everyone was eyeing it up, and people would slow down and stare. Kind of creepy. Driving, and we decide we want to go swimming. We get towards the beach, but there's like no sand. Only rocks. Massive, massive rocks. Upon approaching, we notice we can actually fit inside these things. My friend wants to go first, but wants me to use my smartphone that has a flash or whatever to record and provide light. He goes in. We see there's a little water from the waves crashing against them. This shit was really cool because it was like a huge ass tunnel we could crawl through and not that many tight spaces. And the light from the sun was so bright. It seemed no matter how deep we went, we could still see the entrance. Going deep, we see light coming from other spots too. We must have been crawling through there for a good half hour. Till my friend, who was diabetic, seemed to be going into one of those fits where he needs sugar. I grab a king-sized candy bar from my backpack, and we rest a bit. My phone's almost dead from recording and stuff. Suddenly, our asses feel really wet. I had a flashlight in my backpack, took it out, and looked around. Seems like where we were going was getting flooded. Suddenly realized, this was a horrible idea, and we might die. But the waves didn't look too bad when we got there. Start crawling, and the water starts raising pretty quick. So like, on our hands and knees... The water is up to our elbows. You can imagine the scare. Like I said before, see tons of light coming from different cracks in the rocks, so it's hard to tell which way is a way out, especially when panicking. Eventually we make it out, but have no clue where we were exactly. Start walking, find the small town, and think what the fuck. Walk back the same road we took to the beach, and see there's people by my car, like a lot of small town punk skaters and stuff. Say hey what's up. They reply damn bro, is this your ride? I'm like yeah. They stare at us now. Why are you guys wet? Where did you come from? Tell them we went in those rocks over yonder. They get interested and they start going in the caves and exploring. My face when. I forgot to tell them it was flooding. But it's okay because we were in the middle of nowhere and there were like 12 of them and I was a bit concerned about getting robbed considering we had nothing to defend ourselves against them, and they had skateboards and god knows what else. It was a pretty fun experience overall though. I had something tapping on my window the other night. 
They also live out in the middle of nowhere. Nearest neighbor is probably four miles down in a valley. My home is also built into the side of the hill, so my bedroom is elevated by columns, and my bedroom window is at least 12 plus feet off the very slope ground. I mention the intense slope, because in the absolute crazy chance someone were to be fucking with me, they would not be able to rest the ladder securely on the slope to reach my window. 0 to 30. Getting ready for bed. My three dogs. Two German Shepherds. One JR Terrier. On my bed. Settling into their spots for the night. My BR light is on. I'm sitting in my bed, reading. Suddenly tapping from the window across the room from me. Very distinct. Tap. 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 Dogs don't seem to notice. This freaks me out the most. Same tap again. Reach over and shut off BR light. Grab shotgun from next to bed and point tack light through the window. See nothing. No one. Nada. Turn off light. Move to window. Shine light down into property. Fucking nothing. Put shotgun away. Lay down wondering what the fuck. Same tap again. Decide to go to sleep and deal with it in the morning. Breakfast time. Tell my son the shit that happened previous night. He tells me he's been dealing with the same shit since he moved in with me four years ago and just didn't say anything because he didn't want to sound like he didn't appreciate living with me. Father-son bonding moment over a low strangeness in my mountain home. If it's ghost or whatever, I don't really care. It just bothers me that apparently my dogs can't tell when this thing is around. That house sounds really cozy somehow. Did either of you see anything? I asked him. And he said when he first moved here, when he was 14, he was exploring around the property. I own 10 acres at the top of a mountain. And told me he was chased through the forest by a ghost bear. Leaving the clearing where my house is, there are a lot of trailheads leading into the woods. I haven't even explored most of it. One trailhead in particular is the one that was most used by the previous owner. They bent the smaller trees to create a sort of archway leading into the woods. About 300 meters past the archway is a split in the trail, left or right. Left goes further uphill, and doesn't look like it was used much at all. It's barely a trail, and you can only tell it is because the trees have been cleared, but everything else is overgrown. Right path goes downhill, is very well traveled, and ends at a small level clearing with a meadow in it. B Sun, 12, exploring mountaintop, goes left at the path. He didn't know I was considering it off-limits at the time. Finds a bunch of cool shit I had not seen yet. The remains of an old as fuck cabin. Probably 19th century. Timbers are rotted and collapsed, but it's obvious it was a cabin. Says he gets a weird vibe from the cabin. Continues on for a while. Gets to another clearing, as it were. But not really. All the trees in this clearing had not been cut, but broken at the same time about 1.5 feet high. I mean snapped and jagged, like a hurricane just knocked them all down, but the trees have all been arranged in the center of the clearing into a pentagram. Around this time, my son hears something big making noise across the clearing, looks around, sees what he described as a grizzly bear that was all fucked up, like someone had hacked at its whole body with a sword. He said he could tell it was bleeding, the cuts looked fresh. Suddenly, the thing starts chasing him, and he turns to the trail and bolts. He can hear the thing gaining ground on him as he runs his little legs off down the trail. He says he can hear its heavy footsteps and heavy breathing and branches snapping and shit right on his heels. He makes it to the split in the trail and cuts right, making his way to the archway. The thing does the same and chases his ass all the way to the archway. By this point he is screaming, and bawling, and fucking calling for me, hauling ass down the trail. I hear him, grab my shotgun, and run outside to find him. Just as I get to the archway, he comes busting through in the biggest fit of tears and terror I have ever seen, and have never seen since. He tells me a bloody bear chased him through the woods. I send my son inside, rack a sabot slug into my shotgun, and proceed with caution through the archway and up to the trail to the split. I sense nothing. I don't smell anything. The forest is normal. 
normal sounds, no tracks, etc. Go back home and ask Sun exactly what happened. He fills me in on where he went, what he saw, and what came after him. I'm a little mad he went into the woods without telling me, and even went into a place we weren't familiar, but I let it go. Kinda not believing his story, and thinking he just spooked himself or something. I didn't find any evidence of a bear after all. Decide to check it out the next day. Take shotgun and dog. Leave a little before 10 a.m. Left the kid at home. Make the left turn at the path. It's not far to the cabin. Maybe 700 meters up the trail on the right. Later on, I found two collapsed mine shafts in the area of the cabin. Think this is cool, but not what I'm here for. Less than 200 meters past the cabin is the clearing he mentioned. Sure enough, it was just as he described. Trees snapped at about 1.5 feet high, all jagged and broken with massive force, and all of them arranged into a pentagram in the center. I snooped around for a while, looking for a ghost bear, but found no tracks, no bear shit, nothing. Wreck the pentagram. Drag as many trees as I can into the woodline until I get tired. Go home without incident. Since living here, I have seen and heard something large in the woods when I'm out doing shit. It's always a big shadow out of the corner of my eye. I've lived here for 15 years, and it's happened maybe three dozen times. It happens most often when I am down by the creek. I see it across the water. I have asked my son, and he says he's never seen anything like that, but he has seen the orb. Silver orb, with bright baby blue aura, can be seen sometimes, floating through the woods. Usually comes down from above the treetops, and just kind of moves through the trees. Although we can see it lighting up through the trees, it casts zero ambient light. I and a friend have tried to photograph it multiple times, but the images just come out black. That and the tapping on the window are the only spoops I've had to deal with out here.